I am Tyson Ryanauer and in the first part of this video series you were shown how to visually add together the two fractional manipulatives of 3 fourths and 2 sixths to get a total of 26 20 fourths. In the second segment of this four part series you will not only review more of these visual learning tools but will also be taught how to do the pencil and paper based mathematical steps which everyone needs to know to be able to add two fractions with unlike or different denominators. For while semi-concrete or digitally based manipulatives like 3 fourths and 2 sixths can serve as a guide to help you to better be able to visualize its fractional sum of 26 20 fourths, it would not make sense to use these tools for the addition of all of the different kinds of fractions which are out there. It would, for example, not be practical for a student to spend one's energy during a timed test to turn a single whole rectangle into vertical halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, eighths, or even into tenths, just so it can be added to any of these many other horizontal fractional possibilities which are out there. For not only are there an infinite number of different fractional possibilities that are out there which can be added to other fractions in a myriad number of ways, but most four functioning calculators will not even be able to do this addition process for you. Here is an example of a calculator's limitation. If you enter the fraction 5 sevenths into it by dividing the number 5 by the number 7, you will get this lengthy decimal answer instead. This answer that you get from the calculator is an infinite decimal number and it will never be exactly equal to the fraction 5 sevenths, but only an approximate number to it. What a calculator mainly does is convert fractions into decimals and if the decimal number happens to not be exactly equal to the fraction that created it, then one will just be adding together numbers which will not get exact answers but only approximate answers. This is why you also need to learn about the pencil and paper based skills on how to add fractions so that you will know how to get the exact answers every time. Also, by learning the step-by-step -step process on how to add fractions, you will be able to learn how to add all of them in a very convenient and easy way. Let us use the fractions 3 fourths and 2 sixths, which were visually added in part 1 of this series to get the answer 26 20 fourths as the example here for understanding how this addition process works. Please keep in mind that it is not actually getting the answer which will be important in this stage of the lesson but the steps which you will be able to apply to get this answer. So when adding the fractions 3 fourths and 2 sixths, one needs to first look at the bottom numbers of each of these two fractions. In this example, the bottom numbers happen to be 4 and 6. Now think of a number that 4 and 6 can both fit into. Since 4 times 6 is equal to 24, I know for sure that 24 is a number that 4 and 6 can both fit into. This number 24 will then be put to the right of the two other fractions and will serve as a new common denominator for each of the separate fractions of 3 fourths and 2 sixths so that they can be converted into them. What we are basically doing here is converting the fraction 2 sixths into an equivalent fraction that has 24 as its denominator and also converting 3 fourths into its own matching equivalent fraction which also has 24 as its denominator and it is only when both of these fractions have matching denominators which is when we will be able to add them. Let's start with the bottom number of 6 for the fraction 2 sixths. The number 6 times what number is equal to 24? Since 6 times 4 is equal to 24, multiply that newly found number of 4 by the fractions as top number of 2 and you would get the new top number or numerator of 8. What we have just shown is that the fraction 2 sixths is really just equal to or equivalent to the fraction 8 20 fourths. Now let's work on the bottom number of 4 for the fraction 3 fourths. The number 4 multiplied by what hidden number is equal to its own common denominator of 24? Since 4 times 6 is equal to 24, multiply that same number of 6 that you just found by the fractions top number of 3 and you will now get the new numerator of 18. What we have just done was convert the fraction 3 fourths into its own matching equivalent fraction of 18 20 fourths. In this example of the fraction 18 20 fourths, its numerator has 18 blue rectangles out of a total of 24 equal sized rectangles which are surrounded here in green. In the fraction 8 20 fourths, its numerator has 8 rectangles out of a total of 24 equal sized parts. 
When one adds up the blue and yellow rectangles, this is the same as adding up the numerators 18 and 8. Its sum now becomes 26 out of a total of 24 equal sized rectangles. And since the newly converted fractions of 18 24 and 8 24 each now has 24 as its common denominator, one is now able to add together the two numerators of 18 and 8 to get its new fractional sum of 26 24 Even though this pencil and paper addition problem was done without having to actually use the semi-concrete manipulatives, these virtual learning tools did help you to be able to visualize that the fractions 3 fourths and 2 sixths can both be converted into other fractions which share the common denominator of 24. The important thing that I would like you to learn about in this lesson is the process on how to convert any two fractions which you might be given so that they will both share a common denominator which will then allow their numerators to be able to be added. Here are the fractions 1 third and 1 half. When I click the click here to add button, you can see them being combined to form the fraction 5 sixths. It is equal to 5 sixths because two greens added to one, two yellows is equal to four. And four plus one blue is equal to five shaded objects out of a total of six. Now I would like you to press the pause button on this video so that you can answer this question by proving that one third plus one half is equal to five six using pencil and paper. These are the steps which will be turned in as the real answer for question number one and not the answer five six. Here is the second and last addition problem which I would like you to prove its step by step conversion process using pencil and paper. Before you are the fractions 5 6 and 3 4 After clicking the click here button, one can see that they merge to form the fraction 38 24 It is equal to 38 24 because there are 15 tans. See, there are 15 tans because each tan represents 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. And those 30 tans are then added to three yellows, which make a total of 33 tans and yellows. These in turn are then added to five purples to equal 38 tans, yellows, and purples out of a total of 24 squares. Now pause this video to add the fractions 5, 6, and 3 fourths. Please keep in mind that though its answer is 38 24 this is not the important thing to know about at this time. What is important is that you show the steps of your work on how to convert 5, 6, and 3 fourths into each of their equivalent fractions so that their numerators can then be added. To conclude this video, please include the steps that you used to find the answers for these two questions and turn them in to the teacher who assigned you to do them.